All right, folks, welcome back. It's uh, It's been a long time coming. Today, the goal is to get the bench seat installed in this area. That's gonna be one half of the seating for the eventual kitchen table that's gonna go right in front of this window. So let's get started. All right, this doesn't bode well for the day ahead. Let's see, first challenge, can we make this fit? This is our base, it should fit, but it's so tight. Looks like it needs to go a little bit down on the right side. There we go. All right, so now we got the back perfect. We can work on getting the front to back. Let's get some shims under here before we go any further so we don't lose that. Now let's see how we are from the back. Look at that. That looks pretty good too. You gotta show everyone or you'll have people doubting you. And there's the front one. So we've got it more or less perfect all around. Perfect. So it looks like it. I gotta take that one out a little bit. Just take that out a little bit. Okay. Now this is the part that really needs to fit. Throughout the week, I'm going to come out with a series of videos building the individual parts as kind of bonus footage because I know not everyone's interested in that. Um, so stay tuned for those and look out for them. Hopefully this fits. <laughs> hey! Did you think it was going to fit? I knew it was going to fit because the base of this cabinet that it sits on was like a quarter inch over. Okay, now the next question. Did I leave myself enough room on the edge of the countertop? It looks like I did. So this thing, guys, I got the dimensions from a fine home building article. The angle of this from that article and the height of this, um, it leaves room for a four inch cushion that is supposed to compress to two inches. Uh, I'm gonna put that article in here and I'll also put that angle, which I cannot remember right now. <laughs> Next question, did I build this the right size? Yeah, I know it's going to be a shame to cover this with a cushion, um, 
But I, uh, I put these walnut strips in here for two reasons. One, because it's what I did in the door, but two, I didn't quite have enough maple to make this come out as far as I wanted. So I needed to make it a little wider, so I just put those in there. And I got a nice, thick piece of maple to put up here. And that, that actually almost works perfect. So these drawers are gonna be the subject of another video but I hand cut the dovetails and I hand cut the joints on these face frames for about half of them. soft clothes. They have a very big weight capacity. I decided to go, I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask about the top. Uh, I left the option open for top access, but I did not account for that right now. If I want to do it later, I will. But There you go. So this is uh, ash. This is beetle killed ash from Ohio Outdoor Living Group, and this is maple, also from Ohio Outdoor Living Group. Uh, same with this, maple and walnut, and then this is maple, as is the countertop, all from Ohio Outdoor Living Group. Um, this is a bit lighter, but I think that this will darken as the sun hits it for a while. The light conditions keep changing on me. It's really tough with that window there. soft closes too. So when I glued these up, these are book matched and this grain all aligns this way. It also aligns on these face frames, although it's kind of hard to tell unless you look really close. Um, so now the question is, what am I going to do here? And I actually thought pretty long and hard about this and everything I wanted to do in the shop was going to be really complicated and take me like another week to build. And then I was thinking, these run vertical. So why don't I just take these from the wall and put them right here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the bottoms of these off um, so that you see stuff like this flow down here. There's a... I'm just going to make some very light pencil marks so that I know that I can't go any higher than that when I cut these off. In fact, I'm probably going to cut a quarter of an inch lower. This is nerve wracking. If I make a mess of this, I just have to make a mess of it below those lines. Battery's almost out. That went better than expected. And of course, I'll have to pop these nails out, which that won't be that big of a deal. I didn't even cut the craft paper behind it. And we need which is fine because I have a bunch of spare stuff right up here. So we created a, a bit of a foreseen issue with this board. So what I'm going to do is just pop this and slide it up. Looks 
better I can even nail that one there. Well, we'll make a pathetic attempt at keeping this somewhat air barrier. All right, so that's all patched in. We can put this back. So we've got some screws, some pocket screw holes that I've done to secure it to the base and it's feeling very solid. All right, let's, let's just make sure that this covers that before we go any further. And yeah, you can't see anything. A couple of my nail holes, but you can see nail holes everywhere else. So we've got to make this piece here first. Um, so we're going to have to scribe it so that it goes around this. I've got some hand tools and some marking gauges and stuff, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. It'll just be kind of time consuming. So let's do that now. All right, I'm fairly confident I was able to get a more accurate cut with this hand saw than I could have with the circular saw. The cabinet protrudes farther than the edge of this. So I need to take about a half an inch off of this side of this board first. That will, this will clean up any high spots. Okay. ourselves about a sixteenth of an inch for fit and we're just going to take our marking knife on top of the ruler and that is our cut angle on top and then we'll try to do the same thing on the bottom if we can I need another hand I think we got it Now to, to see how far we go, we just put that on there like that and we'll do both sides. Out to our marking gauge. Mark this in pencil too so both you and I can see.
Okay. Really use a clamp here, huh? little bits off there make it looking somewhat smooth I've got a little pencil mark left here I'm just gonna shave back a little bit all right let's test fit something back there. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I think that's good enough to uh, fasten down. Just take one more look and make sure that gap is lined up. to put in here. Let's put this guy back on. Hopefully it fits somewhat. That looks cool with the uh, with the grain flowing. I'm happy with that. All right, well, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think uh, I think it came out great. I really like this. I like the contrast between um, this is kind of cavity and rustic, and this is like really more refined, like especially these down here. And I like that. I like uh, I, I, everything isn't always orderly. I like some things that don't make sense um, and I like blending the more refined woodworking with the rustic woodworking I think this is pretty cool and I love I like the way the grain flows I'm happy with that decision um, I think it's probably something that not a lot of people are going to notice but when you do notice it you'll think it's neat so I'm going to stick around here until the sun goes down a little more and shoot some more shots to splice into the video but um but this is done all right, the sun went down a bit, so we got better light for filming, so let's step back and check this out. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to keep a lookout for the build videos. 
Um, I'm thinking there's going to be maybe five including this video and eventually once I'm done with them all I'll number them one through five and all that so if you're interested in see the details of how everything's done look out for those. Alright so if you haven't seen the other videos this is the door I was talking about with the walnut strips and this is maple it tends to age just like the ash it almost looks the same. Uh, the floor here the floor here is ash even though you couldn't tell and the, the built-in bed here is also ash. Um, so anyway let's take a look. The sun's still kind of messing up the light but I think you can get the picture of it. And that exposure. And just uh, see that wall. Look at the whole, whole thing here. So this this really, I mean, I'm gonna make the face frames for the cabinets also out of maple, and I'll find some cool figured wood to put inside. And let's check out the drawers. So you can see how I how I cut those. Got the, the dovetailed drawer pieces there. And that one's like that too. And finally, that last one there. And like this little line down here should mostly be covered by cushions most of the time unless you pull the cushions off. Um, and like I said, this will probably get darker. It'll probably get something like this countertop here. Uh, you can see how dark it is. Just the sun. I think the sun just hits it and it just changes its color. But it's still looking good. I don't know if I'd use the uh, walrus oil. That's a good product, but it you know, it's meant for cutting boards. I, I kind of figured it might not work, but I wanted to give it a try. Um, and this here, all this is finished with my typical um, one to one to one ratio of uh, turpentine, boiled linseed oil, and spar urethane. And that's what that's finished with in the drawers. And pretty soon we'll be working on the loft. I think the next big inside project is going to be flooring just because that makes it a lot nicer to stay here. Um, still not decided on what I'm going to do there. 